Now, it is really important uh, for us to understand different midfoot sharp foot deformity patterns uh, in relation to the surgical correction principle. So, by and large, there are three patterns of midfoot deformities we normally see. Um, you know, the rocker bottom forefoot abduction pattern. Uh, the rocker bottom can involve just the medial column or both medial and lateral columns. The forefoot goes into abduction in that pattern. A different pattern is a dorsal subluxation or dislocation type. And the third one is the forefoot adduction pattern. The forefoot addu adduction pattern is much less common and that is due to the failure of the lateral column. But if you look at the, the frequency of these, you know, the pattern one and two are the commonest. So let's go through the deforming forces that operate uh, in these deformities. If you look at the rocker bottom forefoot abduction type, the disease initially starts uh, in the midfoot that results in collapse of the medial column uh, as the disease process starts in the medial column of the midfoot and that lengthens the medial column pushing the forefoot into abduction and as a result the resulting resultant forces of the pull of the muscular tenderness units also exaggerate the deformity in that plane but if you look at the sagittal plane as the midfoot collapses in the medial column that drives the hind foot into equinus and also the uh, tendo achilles uh, gastrosoleus complex will pull uh, that segment whereas the tibialis anterior will pull, pull the anterior segment exaggerating the deformity if you look at the subluxation dislocation pattern here the disease process is through and through the midfoot so that results in uh, overlapping due to subluxation and dislocation uh, breakage of the midfoot and that results in significant shortening of all soft tissues and the resultant deforming forces here are the tibialis anterior uh, you know pulling dorsally whereas the gastrosoleus complex again uh, pulling the heel heel unit dorsally so it's critical that we and un we understand and address this soft tissue uh, imbalance here there is clear equinus uh, component in the hind foot as the calcaneal pitch is abnormal even though the deformity is in the midfoot because it is the midfoot driven hind foot uh, deformity here we need to correct the soft tissue contraction of the Achilles tendinous complex through percutaneous uh, triple hemisection uh, tenotomy of the tender Achilles to improve the calcaneal pitch and by and then by performing the midfoot uh, osteotomies you can correct the whole foot deformity one must also be familiar with the soft tissue imbalance uh, in the sagittal plane the particularly the hind foot goes into virus due to tight and contracted tbrs posterior uh, and if there is associated dorsiflexion component as well then tbr is anterior as well in, in such situation and those need to be corrected before so this soft tissue balancing should be achieved before you do the bone correction and depending on the residual uh, deformity one can plan the regular sections to correct the bone deformity here the forefoot uh, is in valgus this is a uniplanar de deformity so by performing a medially blade based Regular section using straight wedge cuts, uh, as shown in this picture, or you can use a curved wedge uh, cut as well. And we tend to use this particular technique more often. And the key thing is, if it is a uniplanar deformity, if the lateral column is not involved, it is important to keep the lateral cortex of the cuboid in, intact so that the apex of your wedge section is within the mid substance of the cuboid. And I'll tell you the reason why. But it's, I would like to remind you that it's really important that the dissection is not extended beyond that least frank ligament zone because the dorsalis pedis artery dips down um, into on the plantar side to form the plantar arch. So we don't want to damage that. So you mark uh, the the deform the wedge resection areas uh, based on your surgical planning and imaging transfer picture uh, do the wedge resection and here you make sure that the lateral cortex of the cuboid is left intact and through nice gentle plastic deformation correction of the deformity by keeping the lateral cortex intact you can achieve good bone opposition 
nice deformity correction and apply tension band plating on the medial side. So I think it's important to discuss about the fixation principles we use in Sharko for three contractions. Samarco presented uh, and published this paper in 2010 stating that one should go for a long segment and durable fixation during Sharko for three contraction and it's absolutely critical uh, that this principle is followed. And this was achieved in those days using long uh, cannulated threaded screws, um, headed screws, and that can potentially cause damage to the metatarsal heads. And these have been modified uh, since then. So the most uh, accepted current principle of this super construct fixation is a durable long segment rigid fixation with optimal bone opposition, as we have also uh, published our experience. Uh, based on the importance of that principle. So applying that principle, let's go through a few case examples. This is an example of um, uh, abduction rocker de deformity. The lateral column of the midfoot is uh, is intact. You can see the calcaneal pitch uh, is reduced markedly. There's a large plantar exostosis of the medial column. So first correct the hind foot by correcting uh, the by releasing the tight tendo achilles uh, then you regain your calcaneal pitch and here large plantar exostosis was excised joint uh, medial based uh, wedge resections were done the lateral column is intact so there was no need to breach the lateral cortex of the uh, cuboid so correct the deformity and on this occasion a plantar plate was applied because the fixation did not require extension into the telonavicular joint and also the main deforming forces are on the plantar side. And this was done nine years ago, the patient is still uh, very mobile. A different example, a uh, bit more complex of subluxation type uh, with long-standing plantar bone prominence that was managed with the debridement uh, and uh, same stage reconstruction as the bone biopsies specimens done prior to the procedure revealed no infection. So on this occasion, this was a, uh, this was managed with using the modern principles of uh, a modern fixation devices using the same principles here, the beams and a locking plate. Beams are the uh, most secure and, and reproducible uh, fixation uh, devices for midfoot shark coat recontraction because beams alone sometimes cannot provide adequate rotational stability in that situation additional locking plate uh, is also required and we, i would like to emphasize that all joints intended for fusion have to be thoroughly prepared so a bit more complex presentations com combination of hind foot plus midfoot recontraction one third of our procedures involved uh, combined midfoot and hind foot decompressions. In this particular case example, marked hind foot deformity, marked midfoot deformity with recurrent ulcerations and previous ray amputations. So in, we're not going to discuss about the infection part in this particular uh, talk, but this uh, case was managed as a one-stage procedure because bone biopsies and targeted antibiotics were um, provided prior to surgery. So initial hind foot correction followed by a midfoot osteotomy and fixation using a long segment rigid fixation uh, and optimal bone opposition principle. A different example uh, in this patient, the previous midfoot shark cord that got infected and eventually reconstructed, that failed, got infected again and referred to us for a limb salvage procedure. So here there is active osteomyelitis going on. So all of that infected bone has to be excised. On this occasion, uh, I did midfoot osteotomy at this stage to decompress the soft tissues to provide a better healing uh, response. And with local antibiotic eluding calcium sulfate preparation uh, uh, applied as well to eradicate that infection. So after about six to eight weeks, uh, the second stage procedure was done using internal fixation again at this uh, the same principles we discussed earlier and we had a large uh, group of uh, such presentations using these principles with uh, very good results so just to finish off out of 127 uh, midfoot hindfoot and combined 
mid foot and hind foot vegan fractions we have done in our institute uh, very high ASA grade and you know quite significant portion of these patients were recommended at BKA from the referring hospital uh, and this you know 20 percent of these had active infection requiring a two-stage recontraction so the outcome so far pretty good the limb salvage was uh, has been achieved in 100 percent of patients uh, 89 percent percent of uh, feet had full bone fusion which is the aim to achieve in all patients um, 82 percent are ambulatory footwear but metalwork failure breakage of screws and plates is high in those group of patients that that are treated with internal fixation but that doesn't seem to affect their functional outcome so that gives you a flavor on the kind of uh, midfoot sharp body contraction program we have and I, and we are happy to take any questions um, and during case discussions as well. Thank you very much.